There is no such thing as a fact. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a fact. Welcome back. It's the 23rd of April, 2013, and I am Alex Fate. I'm back to ramble for a short while. I'd like to start by saying thank you to those who appreciate my other rambles, and if people like to listen, I will do my best to give you something to think about. I've got my cup of tea, as usual, so every now and again you might hear a thought get sidetracked. What a great way to sidetrack. I had two topics that I was going to talk about today. Not really news topics. Sometimes I'll mention the news and sometimes sometimes just life, whatever I see, how I see it. And curiously today I was getting in the mood to sit here in front of a microphone and talk to myself. And I received a message from somebody and we ended up ended up chatting and as you may know from my previous rambles this is unedited so I will just continue if I make a mistake nothing is planned no offense intended so please sit back and just let me uh, suggest some thoughts to you so anyway this uh, message was there I can't remember in truth if I messaged them first or they messaged me or how it went and we started talking about helping people, or if actions were helping. Some quite strong words were used, and I don't mean swear words. I mean strong words as in physical, intellectual, emotional, spiritual. Very strong words. Even the word sacrifice came up at one point. Each of those words are very strong in themselves. And we were discussing if, well, I'll just say my view of what I was discussing. I'm not too sure if the other person had the same thought. But for me, we were discussing if we should help each other. If we can help other people. Or if that is if that is unhealthy, if the person must ask for help before they receive it. And what a fascinating topic. So I'm going to have a sip. To have a think. I start these podcasts saying there is no such thing as a fact. Well, in philosophy, there are moral facts. That's an actual phrase that, that is used. And uh, a classic argument might be that if, if you and your partner suddenly come into lots of money, what do you do with it? If, if your partner suddenly suggests that they or that, that that you both could give them give the money or a large part of the money to uh, poor people, starving people, or people on the street to help someone, and that you don't need the money so much that you have enough. And the other person or you may say, "Well, hang on a minute. We can use the money too. We we give enough. We give to these things, and and even if we do, it's not going to make a difference." Now, where would you stand? Would you choose to help? Or do you think you already do? Or don't you want to? And those type of arguments are what would be called moral facts. I mean, you, you could argue either way. And you could state opinions and facts, if you like, for that. But then there are counter-arguments. 
always the left and the right brain. And although I'm not too keen on the simplicity of arguing one side or the other, when you do that it does tend to help move a thought process. And so the person I was chatting to, they suggested a very simple scenario. They said that if a person's car was broken, they wouldn't try to fix it. And that makes kind of sense, doesn't it? Especially if you're not a mechanic, and you're probably going to make it worse. Rather than helping, you're going to hinder. But then I I, I thought of that, and I thought, well, surely it depends upon the person and the circumstance. And maybe there are many shades of help. You can come at things from different angles, so you don't have to try and fix a car if you can't break it. Maybe you could help in other ways. So so I suggested, for example, that this person might... They might offer their drive for where they live for the car to be put there. So the person who has the broken car can move on with their journey a little bit. They can leave their car in a safe place and go off to find a garage themselves if that's what they want to do find somebody to fix it who can fix it so you're you're helping the situation and I don't think the other person agreed with me on this in fact I'm pretty sure they didn't which is so healthy (laughs) Uh, what does that mean? Why wouldn't they choose to help in in a conventional sense like that? I mean, this is coming back to the thought of, is the person asking? So they said if if the person asked them if they could store the car there overnight, then yeah, sure, they'd help. But if they didn't ask, I don't think they would. And then they explained to me reasons briefly, why why they would choose not to. And what would you do? Imagine you're at home one night and you hear a car outside and it sounds like it's struggling. Gears are grinding, engines banging, it's making a lot of noise. And then you hear all this steam and noise and the car's broken down outside pretty much. Would you stay indoors and wait? And maybe there'd be a knock at the door. And if there was, would you answer it? Or would you turn the TV off and hide behind the curtains and hope they go away? After all, who do you know? Who, who's knocking on your door? It could be a murderer. It could be a gang of drunken youths. It could be anyone unless you actually open that door isn't that like like life in so many ways unless we actually open that door we just can't see beyond it that's uh, that's uh dare i say a metaphor for so many things it's a little bit like having a sip of tea which i'm going to do now to me all things are like sipping tea But back to our story. So there we are at home, and there's a knock at the door. Well, let's say, did we even get to that point? This person is arguing that, arguing in a healthy way this is, arguing the point rather than the person. They're saying that if they didn't knock on the door, they wouldn't offer help. They wouldn't open the door themselves and go outside. At least that's how I understood what they said. Now, I said, and I think it was true, I said, I will offer. So, I'm not going to wait for them to knock on the door. Or I'm definitely not going to well, I'm, I'm 
going to agree first of all, I'm not going to go outside and try and fix their car. Which also is interesting because that, that assumes that we can we can see the problem, that we perceive what the problem is. And maybe, maybe the broken car is not actually the problem. So there is perhaps an element of risk in that. Who are we to decide what another person's problem is anyway? But even knowing that, I think I would open that door. And I would probably try to assess what the situation is outside. And if it looks like it's a murderer in a car, I'll probably close the door again. <laughs> as quick as I can. I might take a peek out of the curtains first, or be between the curtains, out of the window. But what about if we do step outside and we just find... A person there, an average regular person, <clears throat> excuse me, someone that could be your neighbour. Uh, they're not threatening to us. They don't look as if they're going to be uh, weak or intimidated or anything. They just look like a, a regular, a regular person. Whatever a regular person is. Maybe they look similar to us. Maybe similar to you. Someone you can identify with. So if that's the case, it comes down to the question of what do you think the problem is? And if the problem seems to be their car is broken, do we assume that? Do we then go forward to the next stage and make a decision? There's a person here. We kind of trust them. Should we offer help? They haven't asked for help. They might look across at you and glance away again, back down to the dash. Maybe they're fiddling with papers and instruction manual, maybe phoning the AA, maybe calling their partner, maybe maybe they're just lost. Maybe they've given up. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> we just don't know. So do we take initiative and go and ask? Or should we as this person suggested, wait until they ask for help themselves. I said I would still offer help. Maybe I'm a fool. Maybe I'm naive. Maybe my offer of help would not be wanted. Maybe it would do more harm than good. Maybe I would never know the answer to any of those questions or get closer to the answer unless I did offer. The offering is connection. Should we be afraid of connection? Maybe this other person is more wise than me. I have a feeling they might see the offering as interfering. It's definitely going to be an influence. An influence can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending upon your, upon your point of view. In my opinion, all things are connected. And I mean that quite literally. If you look around you, everything around you is coming from you. It's coming from where you're sat through your eyes, how you perceive it, how you interpret it, how you feel it. You could go into a pub, a good old English pub, with a nice warm fire, and it's winter, and it's snug inside, and there are people chatting, and it's got a lovely, warm, snug feeling. And there's a half pint glass on the table and it is f half full, half full of cool beer. <laughs> I've gone somewhere else there. Now, one of the, dare I say, cheesy things that are said a lot is something half full or is it half empty? 
Well, there's another option. If a glass is half full or half empty, we're talking about how we perceive that glass, how we understand it. And by that, we are actually saying we have understood it. We formed an opinion about it. Well, let's say in that nice warm pub where we've sat on a nice, comfortable sofa by the log fire. In walks somebody suffering from depression, severe depression. And they've walked in there to get out of the cold because the wind outside was biting into them. And they walk into this room full of people chattering and ignoring them. They, they, they'll glance up and try and see a friendly face, but all they see is people engaged with other people and they feel more isolated than ever. And the warm fire there, people sat next to it and they don't feel comfortable with those people. They can't get close to that warmth. So they sit up maybe on a stool near the uh, table where that glass is but they haven't noticed it it wasn't half full it wasn't half empty they could go through all their their business there they could sit on that stool look around the room maybe get a drink themselves maybe not and they could leave and just not know the glass was there now let's just think about that a moment How true is that of our lives? People don't see what's in front of their face. And by that definition, how do we know that we see what's in front of our face? If we can't see it, how do we know it's there? How can we ask a question about something if we don't know it exists? Perhaps somebody offering us a drink and mentioning that there's this glass on the table or they could have the beer or, or they could move the glass would bring it to our attention. Now that is definitely influencing. It's somebody maybe with good intentions and the phrase for that is that all well, good intentions lead to hell. And trust me, I think they may. There are good intentions. And I'm drifting here, as I tend to do on these chats. Because now I've gone to an old argument that, that I used to love. <laughs> I used to think about quite a bit once upon a time. Which is most important to us? Intentions or results? Let's say, for example, we're, we're trying to build a bridge to get from one side of a ravine to another. We can have the best intentions in the world. But many people would say it's the results that matter. So if you want to get across that bridge, all the intentions don't mean anything unless you can build that bridge. So often people will say the results are the important thing. I disagree. I've disagreed with this for so many years, I'm sure it's more than one lifetime. And sometimes, sometimes I'll question that belief. Because all beliefs should be questioned. I believe that's a sensible thing to do. <laughs> My chosen viewpoint is that it is the intention that is important. The, if you have the honest intention of building that bridge, the likelihood is it will be built. It may not be built as quick as people would like. It may not be built in the way people would like. Maybe you won't even get to finish it. But your influence 
will bring it about. Probably. So I favour intention, which is like influence to me. We don't know what results we're going to get when we influence someone. Helping an old lady across the street so she has an accident slipping on a banana skin on the other side that she never would have reached before. Trying to teach someone a new skill so they can further their lives. Maybe it will benefit them. Maybe it won't. Do they need to ask for that help first? How can they ask for help if they can't see the problems, if they don't know them? Who decides the problems? I think this is where the other person was coming from, that who are we to say? Well, I still will come back to I will offer help. Well, that's my belief today. I wonder if I'd do that. If a car breaks down outside, I think the truth is it's going to depend upon many things. Sure, I'd like to think I'd do that, but maybe I would be in bed at the time. Maybe I'd be, I don't know, having a nice cup of tea. Maybe I'd be busy with lots of work. Maybe I would be sat there relaxing and quite happy to go outside. There are so many factors that we, perhaps we can't say. It depends literally upon the moment. We can't predict these things. Maybe this is a little bit when they have the the hero that the news agencies love to promote. Something happened, someone robbed a bank and someone hit the robber over the head or or saved the old lady or something and they're, they're classed as a hero and they don't even know what they did they just they just acted reacted instinctively in the moment because that's all there is and in the moment we haven't got time to project our fears into the future or worry about the anxieties of our past All we have is that moment, and we feel it based upon all of the things around us. But then I have another thought. But I can tell I need a cup of tea before I have that one. Hmm. Before I share that one. What do you think? When I sip my tea... Do you think you know how you would act or react in a scene? Do you know what is morally right or wrong for you? Can you believe that you would behave that way? If something traumatic happened in front of you, would you freeze like a rabbit in headlights? Or would you run? in panic or maybe maybe you'd rush to help as best you can not trying to decide what is right or wrong just trying to do the act of doing perhaps is the most important to make use of who we are of our lives of our opportunities I often say that all we have our opportunities. That's all we have, nothing else. I like that statement. I think that's that's quite a that's really quite a deep statement for me anyway. I believe it was Mark Twain who said that most people miss opportunity because it's dressed in work clothes. No, it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. (laughs) Something like that. Don't quote me on that quote, by the way. 
And maybe he's right in a way. And it's like I'm saying, it's the act of doing. By doing, we place ourselves in a different situation. Mentally, physically, spiritually. In all ways. We place our being in another situation. If we do not do, then we cannot be. Not truly. Because all things are connected. So if I think about building a fence, it's not enough. I have to put those thoughts into actions and they have to be driven by desire or otherwise or otherwise I could uh, I could suffer from the action which perhaps is is another form of work but I'm drifting as I uh, as I usually do yeah so I, I was thinking when I was talking to this person about work and would offering help be interference would it be interfering Actually, so yes, that, that was, would it be interfering? And I thought, what an interesting word. Interfering is interference. And is, is that really what we are? We are just interference between each other, within the noise of, of our environment, of our world, of us. That all we are perhaps is noise. And we are the interference. We are our own wave our own sound if you like i don't want to say sound our own energy energy perhaps is a a cheap phrase it's a throwaway word but if we can tune our energy into someone else perhaps that becomes positive interference good influence healthy influence otherwise maybe we destroy one wave will cancel out another and we become negative but we can't tell that properly <laughs> unless we combine those waves, those energies together. So it is only the act of doing. So then I thought, as I do, influence. I remember talking to another person not too long ago and we talked about the subject of art. What is art? And perhaps I should dedicate a, another podcast to that topic because I have a feeling it's been talked about for uh, almost as long as talking began. I feel there are several definitions for what art is or at least several definitions that I can relate to. Uh, maybe you have your own definition, and I would love to hear that. So if you do, please write them in the comments for this video. But I'm going to suggest just one definition for now. And that is that art is not merely the act of creation. It is creation by an artist, or for lack of a better phrase, I would say an individual, a being, a person, which is interesting because it brings into question if that's the case, if, if you need a single individual, if you can have collaboration or even art from other creatures. But for the sake of argument, we'll say at the moment that art is, is from the individual. And it is the creation of something with the intention to connect to others or themselves. There has to be that intention to bring about something. And there has to be purpose to bringing that about. Or is it just art for art's sake, in which, in which case there is no connection, there is no development, there is no, no value. The artists may paint for themselves, they, they, may, they may explore areas trying to develop an understanding or, or, or connection to what they've got, but they have that intention to connect to it in some way. Some artists will be slightly the reverse that they they 
they may feel that it isn't them that the the energy the the artistic spirit if you like is is passing through them into their work and that's where it will be for others to connect to if other people can I'll tell you why I'm saying this after I have another sip it's funny how I talk at times isn't it rambling away funny as in curious curious to me maybe I have an intention maybe this is my creation maybe this is my art maybe <laughs> anyway where was I oh yes the artist if the artist decides to influence to, oh I slipped there did you catch me <laughs> I have a sip of tea before I say that again these podcasts I've, I've noticed seem to be about the length of a cup of tea for me it takes me half an hour roughly to sip one cup you could probably profile me on that if you like so, getting to the bottom of my cup. If the artist has the intention to create and connect, they have the influence or the desire to influence. Influence is what they thirst off, even if they deny it. If they say, no, 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 I don't want to influence, they're lying. They want to influence themselves or other people. They want to have a connection. They want to have a value. They must have value to their work. Or else they themselves are worthless. Which comes back to the car. Maybe my offer of help is like the artist trying to influence. Trying to seek value within myself and maybe I'm afraid maybe I'm afraid that if I don't have that influence then I have no value or maybe I see the other way that I can influence and there is the possibility of that being positive and healthy. Healthy for both individuals. The art can be healthy. It can inspire. The best influence in the world inspires, drives others to create, drives others to think, drive, drives others to grow. Maybe helping that individual with their car will have an influence that I never considered. But by crossing over those waves, those energies, those influences, those interferences with each other, that is, that is one of the deepest forms of art we can have. Because we can't see it in a painting, we can only experience it through life. It's just a thought, of course. And as we know, ideas are two a penny on the internet. <laughs> One man had the idea of eating an onion, I believe, on the internet and had hundreds of thousands of views. I have the idea of helping someone with a broken car. I suspect it will not be quite as popular. A sigh. I have one last sigh for you, and that is because I have another question in my head. Am 
am I saying through all these words that I am an artist, that I desire to be an artist, or that I am? Do I have the arrogance to say that? Is that arrogance? Who decides? Maybe you can decide. You can tell me politely, I hope, in the comments. <laughs> Please be polite. And I think that's about enough time for this uh, rambling adventure. Thank you very much to the to the person who helped me think. I appreciate their influence. Now I say that I'm assuming that I asked them. I influenced. Well, there you go. Maybe I started that conversation. Hopefully a conversation that doesn't end. And with that, hopefully my podcast will be back and I will talk on the other topics that I got distracted on this time. So thank you very much for listening. And, well, take a moment to sip your drink and savour its taste. Thank you for listening.